Hello, I'm Christopher McNally. I am a political economist, a professor at Chaminade University in Honolulu, Hawaii. I study China's political economy uh, over the reform era, and I'm very happy to be here. One of the biggest challenges is how to continue to support economic growth and more narrowly, innovation, good growth. Uh, because China has been experiencing good growth, there's been lots of innovation, there's been decent productivity growth over the past 20, 30 years. But over the past 10 years, productivity growth, at least if you look at the figures, they're, they're sometimes a bit difficult to tease out, it hasn't been doing very well. It seems that it has taken more and more investment uh, to get a bang for your buck, to get economic growth and innovation coming out of it. So one of the major difficulties the Chinese government is facing and will be in the near future is how to truly support innovative growth. Uh, and as I mentioned before, I think uh, three things are necessary for sure is continued support of the most innovative sectors, continued investment in basic R&D as well as applied R&D, but also, and perhaps even more importantly, is getting the animal spirits back going in the Chinese tech sector and invigorating investment and especially innovative new solutions there. Now, with the China-US tech war, uh, this obviously isn't quite so easy because before a lot of innovation now is actually focused on plugging the gaps uh, that have been left by sanctions imposed by the US and uh, her allies on China. So. Perhaps that will be very difficult to kind of uh, do as well because it, it will detract from actually what is, you know, truly innovative growth because you're just catching up. The challenges that China faces in the next couple of years are actually quite unlike of the challenges they faced uh, even just during the 20 teens, but especially the 2000s. And we will be seeing less extensive growth and hopefully much more intensive growth, growth focused on innovation and new companies and new solutions. Uh, to both business problems and, and you know, for consumer satisfaction. Uh, but I truly believe that the Chinese government more directly and more immediately has quite a simple solution uh, to the problems they are faced, and that is direct consumption supports. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, people will probably look back at what the United States has done and criticize it because of the enormous inflationary bout we have been experiencing. But we shouldn't forget that this has been an economic experiment of historic proportions, where a government has not only flooded the economy with money, which basically just seems, if you don't combine it with anything else, it just basically seems to spiral around in the financial sector and create asset inflation, with very little true inflation, as we saw in the 20 teens. But this time, we had true fiscal support for citizens, which was Clearly, very, very important for most Americans to get through this period. Uh, the unemployment supports, the direct financial, financial supports, the PPP loans for companies. Uh, and China could really look at this and, and in kind of in a hard-nosed way analyze, you know, this has worked. This really, really jumpstarts an economy. But we don't want to create the kind of inflation they're experiencing right now. And, and, you know, having to kind of knee jerk react and pump interest rates up at the fastest in over 40 years, uh, you know, that's not the, where you want to end up. But there are good lessons to be learned from this, lessons that China could basically take advantage of right now.